let's take a look at voltage, current, and resistance in different types of circuit. Here's a series circuit. Here's the high voltage end of the battery. Here's the low voltage end. You're an electron. What happens? Well, Jimmy Electron here comes, as it were, out of the high voltage end of the battery. Jimmy Electron seeks a way to get over to the low voltage end of the battery. Only one way to go that way is forward. Wire turns right, Jimmy turns right. Then what? There's a resistor. It's a drag. It's really hard to go through. Does Jimmy Electron have to go through the resistor? Yes, Jimmy does. In fact, Jimmy has to go to all the resistors in order to find a way back to the low voltage terminal of the battery. There is no other way. There is no buffet. There are no set of choices. There is one way from one end of the battery to the other. Fatima Electron comes right behind Jimmy. What does she do? Same thing. Up, right, through all the resistors, down and over. All the electrons do the same thing. There are no choices in a series circuit. In a series circuit, the total current is the same everywhere. If you want to know what current flows through R1, it's easy. All of it. If you want to know what current flows through R3, it's just as easy. It's still all of it. There's no point in talking about the current through individual resistors in a series circuit because there aren't individual currents. There's only one current going around the circuit and back. Now let's take a look at the voltage use here. Right here, what's the voltage on this wire right here? Let's say it's a 9-volt battery for the sake of the argument. This is a high-voltage terminal. Let's say 9 volts. So the voltage right here on this part of the wire is 9 volts, and the voltage over here is 9 volts, and the voltage over here is 9 volts. Right up to the resistor, we have no idea what's going to happen in the resistor. Let's go to the other place we know. We'll ground this circuit down here just for the sake of the argument. 9-volt voltage difference would make this the 0 volts. Now, this wire is going to be at 0 volts, and this wire is going to be at 0 volts, and this wire is going to be at 0 volts, and this wire right here is going to be at 0 volts. So in between this segment of wire and this segment of wire, our voltage has dropped from 9 volts to 0 volts. Presumably some of that voltage drop occurred here in the first resistor, some here, and some here. If these are not identical resistors, we have no idea how much the voltage dropped through each one. What we do know is that by the time we've gone from here to here, the voltage has dropped a full 9 volts. The voltage drop in the first plus the voltage drop in the second plus the voltage drop in the third equals our grand total that was in the battery before. In a series circuit, one current flows throughout the whole circuit, whereas the voltage is broken up into pieces and shared throughout. How does this affect the resistance? Well, we know that the voltage drop in R1 is I1 R1 by Ohm's law. Hereafter, we always have to tag all the V's and I's and R's in Ohm's law. It's not difficult. What's V3? Well, V3 is I3 R3, just like V2 is I2 R2. So this means that the total voltage that we need to get to equals the total current times the total resistance, and that's the sum of the currents and resistances for the other three resistors. What do you notice about this line? What do you notice that's the same? Substitute in. Look, the currents are all the same. And that means we can cancel them out. We can cancel them all out. And what's left? A nice formula for our total resistance. In a series circuit, and only in a series circuit, the total resistance is the sum of the individual resistors, just as it should be. 100 ohms plus 200 ohms plus 300 ohms equals 600 ohms of total resistance. Now, in a parallel circuit, things are completely different. The same problem. Jimmy Electron comes out of the high voltage terminal seeking to return to the low voltage terminal by the quickest and easiest route. Of course, the wire turns right. Jimmy's got to turn right. Now, Jimmy gets here. Now, what happens? For the first time, Jimmy Electron has a choice. Jimmy Electron can turn right and go through R1. This is a path of high resistance, and it does not appeal to Jimmy. Jimmy could continue to go straight. There are no resistors up here, but now there's another junction, another choice. Jimmy could turn right and go through R2. There's another resistor. It's a path of high resistance. However, if Jimmy goes straight and avoids R2, Jimmy must turn right and Jimmy must go through R3. There is no other way around. 
Jimmy can choose between taking any of these three paths. If Jimmy goes through R3, he will meet up at this juncture uh, with Latanya Electron um, and Xiao Electron, who went through R2, and the three of them together will meet up with Marcos Electron and Olivia Electron that went through R1, and the five of them together, the whole set of currents, will come back here all together in a great total to reach their mutual common goal of the low voltage terminal of the battery. In a parallel circuit, the current splits up into pieces and is shared throughout the circuit. The total current branches into I1, I2, and I3, and they come back together. This junction current here, by conservation of charge, is I2 plus I3. This junction current here is I2 plus I3 plus I1, I1 plus I2 plus I3, the total current. Voltage is another question, and a very interesting question it is. By our same, it's touching a wire and it's touching one part of the battery logic. The voltage over here is still 9 volts. That's the same in this wire and in this wire and in this wire, which is still touching a wire that's touching a battery with nothing in between. Over here, on the other hand, the voltage is still zero volts. That means that between this wire and this wire, right where the resistor is, there is a voltage drop from here to here of nine volts. That's true for this resistor, which goes from nine volts to zero volts. It's true for this resistor, which goes from nine volts to zero volts. In fact, the voltage drop across each of the resistors is equal to the total battery voltage. Check it out. Each one of these resistors has a private line to the battery that's shared with no other resistor. Jimmy Electron chose to go all the way around to the right and go through R3. But Jimmy will not then double back and go through R2 and double back a second time to go through R1 like somebody slapping hands after a race. Each individual electron goes through exactly one resistor, drops its entire voltage, and happily returns to the low voltage terminal of the battery. Only one route is ever taken at a time by any one electron. This is the complete opposite of a series circuit. The voltage is used uniformly throughout the circuit. There isn't a voltage drop on the first, distinct from the second, distinct from the third, because they're all equivalent to the total voltage. And this is going to lead to some interesting algebra. Let's give it a try. The total current is the sum of all the branch currents. That's by Ohm's law, Vt over Rt, V1 over R1, etc., etc., etc. Do you see something that's the same that's worth substituting? Go for it. Substitute it. You'll get something very pretty indeed. Total voltage throughout. Now be very, very, very careful when you cancel out that total voltage. Cancel it out carefully. That is to say, divide each term by Vt with actual division and algebra, not with an eraser, and see what you get. Ready? Careful? 1 over R1, 1 over R2, 1 over R3. You've canceled something out of the numerator, but that doesn't make the numerator vanish. It makes the numerator 1. Now, off in a margin somewhere, do a quick math check. What's 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3? Yeah, I know. It's a pain. Work it out. Do the fractions. Got it? What was the first thing you had to do to solve that problem? Was it cancel out the ones on top? Did you get 2 plus 3 equals 5, 1 half plus 1 third equals 1 fifth? I don't think so, because 1 half is less than 1 half and 1 third. The first thing you did was find a common denominator. We can't do that here. There is no common denominator. All these resistors are different, and even if they weren't, we have no idea what they are. This formula is done. The formula for resistance in a parallel circuit does not give you total resistance. It gives you a set of denominators. This is the formula for a denominator, and it is devilishly annoying to remember when you're in a hurry.
hurry that it does not give you the total resistance. For those of you planning to do this on your trusty calculator, the best way to type this in, and the only authorized way for the Rochelle Zell Jewish High School Physics class, is to try it this way. Type the numbers in with parentheses and use your handy dandy exponent key. Find the first denominator, the second denominator, the third denominator, and all together you are not done until you have taken the reciprocal of this and gotten an answer. Check it out. Because we're adding terms to a denominator, a bigger denominator yields a smaller total resistance. And that's exactly the kind of behavior we expected from a parallel circuit, where if we add more paths in parallel and more ways for the current to flow, we should get more current, not less. And more current means less resistance, not more. This is the exact opposite of a series circuit, exactly the way it should be. You now have two formulas, one for parallel and one for series, ready to help you work out whichever circuit you have on the table in front of you.